I'm Michael Pritchanello. This is Zach Mosley. Together we run the Classic Car Club of Manhattan. And this is a very special edition of Road Testament <laughs> from, I can't from the that. Classic. All right, I got it. No, I got it. I'll do it. I'll do it one more time. Road Testament. <laughs> Grotescament. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about what you would fill your garage with, with $100,000 or the very specific $87,000. The best driving experience you could have for 20 grand or less. Uh, what the future classic cars are going to be. And maybe we might even come up with a better name for this show while we're here. Ready? Good? Fantastic. Fantastic. I didn't do it in order. So we're at the Classic Car Club Bar. We're big fans of driving and drinking. It's the right order. The other one gets me in a little bit of trouble. Um, and this is where, you know, the members hang out. We pontificate about things we know nothing of and pretend that we're an expert. That's how it goes. And today we're talking about uh, what we think are going to be five solid future classics. Not classics, yeah. Future classics. I would say one of my top ones is uh, Fox Body 5 liter Mustang. If you can still find one. They've been yeah. used by Guidos, right? And Ice Cube wannabes. Or not Ice Cube, Ice yeah. Vanilla Ice. Hey, you know what? They're also legitimately fast. So the first they car are. I was actually terrified blind in was a five liter Mustang. I, I, Me too. Yeah, I, I, I was at my friend's house. His buddy was back. He like he enlisted in the army or something, and he was like, "They're all building these drag race five liter Mustangs down in Virginia or something." And he brought the thing back, and literally turned the corner. I barely like settled in the seat. It's got thrown back, and everything started going blurry around me. I saw, all I could see is the tack going. <laughs> Yeah. Through the gears. It was I really it. quick. I, w I went to Fordham University. Yeah. And in freshman year, I was friends with this guy named Greg Mulligan. Mulligans! <laughs> that's, like, that's his name, right? And he used to drag race his five liter for titles. Wow. And his car, like, on the side, it had crinkles because when you get on the gas, it had so much torque, it would actually twist up the chassis a little bit. And the skins couldn't handle it. Yeah, that's a well built chassis. And we were, <laughs> <laughs> and we were in the Bronx, like the worst place you should be. And he was like, come on, I'll show you what the car can do. And I swear to God, down Webster Avenue, I couldn't like get out of the seat. I was pinned so far back, and he had done a lot of work to this car. And the whole trip, I laughed like a little girl. That's what yeah, I no, yeah. I remember. Like, my, my other it was terrifying. It's terrifyingly we're all, fast. We're just shrieking like little girls. Yeah. So that's my one call. I think that's a future classic. All right. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a bit more into the future, because it's still contemporary now. But this is like you our... have to wear a special head gear. Yeah, tw 25 <laughs> years ahead. I think the Porsche Cayman S. Mm. First, first generation is going to be a uh, classic. Because it, it's, it's a car that upset Porsche. You know, kind of threw everything off. And it was like, oh, what are we doing? This, this little baby car is actually kind of going to outrun everything. Now, I'm and, a big... And, and it's, it's actually, I think it's a beautiful car. It's a little awkward when it first came out. But I think it's, mm. it's cool. It's got good lines. So, so I'm, a, a, I'm, a, I'm a huge Porsche car. fan. I'm a big 911 fan. I actually think Caymans are better. I know you're not allowed to say it, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think I think that they just put a slightly smaller motor in there, and as everybody says, just so it's not as fast as a 911. Yeah. But it, come on, it's got a great wheelbase, mid-bound engine. Yeah. That's a cool car. Yeah, and once they add another couple feet to the 911 and get the engine in the middle, then they'll people look back and say, oh yeah, they had it right in the Cayman. They yeah. just started doing that. And, and low production numbers on the S's in America. Yeah, yeah so. I mean it's it's hard to find. I, I know because we blew up a motor in one. Try to find a spare motor for a Cayman. It's possible. I would say uh, another future classic would be um, any Honda that has an R in it. I don't know, like Civic Type R. Espe especially, you know, ones that are in nice condition. Kind of like I, I love like you know Audi 100s from like 1983 or something that are really nice because there's not many of them out there, and most of them are really shit and they're like $400. Yeah. But if you find one that someone actually cared about, despite the fact that it's worth nothing, it's amazing. You know, yeah. it's like. And there's such a culture around Civics, like young kids who could afford yeah. them and actually make them quick, that there's so many aftermarket parts, there's so many upgrades you could buy. And I think that that's one of those few classics that'll be based on what you've done to it rather than keeping it stock, right? I think the yeah. more you do to that car, the cooler it be. Yeah. Apparently, Toyota Supra, too. I'm just yeah. adding that one in right now. Yeah, yeah. Toyota Supra. Actually, it's kind of a classic now, isn't it? It sort of counts. Yeah, but they still show up like a modernized enough. People don't know it's classic. No. You, know, you have to go another 10 years before, before they'll be true, true classics. I think anything from this era with a wagon formation. 
yeah. and fives. And, and, okay, so a wagon and a big motor. So yeah. CTSV wagon, um, five series M5 wagons yeah. if you could find them. Audi S4 wagon. S4 wagon. Those are, in America, they never really took off, but yeah. I think the Euro coolness of them will keep it going, and they're going to they're gonna be swallowed up by hybrids or... Yeah, they're, they're already hybrids. Is. What do you call those? Crossovers? What's a crossover? It's just something that does a lot of things half-assed is what it is, Yeah, right? it's like... It's like you know, when I got my first mountain bike, and then my dad got into bikes, and he got a mountain bike, and then we got my mom a bike, and it was a crossover. It was like the hybrid of bicycles. It was just terrible. It had like, it sort of had a 10 speed, and it had like kind of medium width tires that weren't wide enough to take off road, and too too wide to be good on road. Yeah. It's terrible. It's an awful thing. It's like X6. BMW X6. Also, big BMW fan. I don't get an X6. Everybody loves them. I don't get it. It's not a car. It's not an SUV. You can't take it on road. You really, like, it drives just like a car. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm sorry. It doesn't. It's got a higher center of gravity. It just doesn't. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to go against you, though, and say it. X6M, that could be a future classic. It would be like a Lamborghini LMO2. You know what would be better, though? <laughs> an M6. Yeah. An M6 would just be better. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know right. how, how, right. how about this? The, uh, the last of the lightweight Lotuses. Mm. You know, the, the Lotus Elise was the, it was the first Lotus that was ever designed to do more than cross the finish line and fall apart. Yeah. So it actually worked, and people could really drive it. For and two it's, weekends in a row. And it's going to be the last of the you know the true lightweight Lotuses, you know. Yeah. Also, BMW. I mean, uh, Buick uh, GNX. It's kind of already uh, a classic. I'm sort of a big fan of that. Yeah, car. yeah. I'm from Long Island, man. You know, that's that's a, that's a cool car right there for me. You pulled out one the other day. What was the movie? What was the one from the movie? No, it was a Buick. Uh, oh yeah, Monte Carlo from from Training Day. Mm. <laughs> it's like my all-time favorite car. That one with those wheels and the hydraulic system. A Ice Cube soundtrack always in the back. Or Dr. Dre soundtrack always in the back. Much right. better. That's one of my favorites. I think that'd be a cool classic. Right, so I saw one in Soho the other day. I had to take a picture of it. I was that guy. Everybody was like, "What's this piece of crap in the street?" But I thought it looked cool, man. So is this? Is it? Have we just defined our uh, ultimate? I think but, we've just pointed but, out that we're like motorsport mullet dirt bags. Well, yeah, no, but, so, so, <laughs> so, so, so if we have a six car garage yeah. in 25 years filled with the ultimate collector cars, apparently it's going to have a Cayman, which is it's a necessity. No, necessity. Uh, Monte Carlo. Necessity. Or a GNX. A Honda, I'd go Monte a Honda Carlo Civic before a GNX. R. GNX yeah. has a lot more street cred, but I think a Monte Carlo is just a little bit cooler. Just a little bit cooler. With hydraulics. Yeah. And spoke wheels. Any, and a Dr. Dre soundtrack. Yeah. It's Any of those cars. mullet cars. I would want to get one straight from the figure eight track at Thursday Thunder in Scarborough, Maine. Though, because you go up there, Thursday Thunder, everyone, I think the driver's drinking, everyone's drinking, doing, doing figure eight racing. Uh, and it's all Monte Carlos with just like solid axles sliding on sideways. It's I like awesome. that as well. Yeah. It sounds right. What are the classics? We come up with any others? I, I can't imagine anything better than those. No. Oh. Uh, Oh yeah, sorry. Z Z4 Z3. Uh, yeah, I like the Z4 M Coupe, but yeah, the Z3 was the one. That 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 that's the, the little the little horseshoe thing. So I'm gonna throw it to Zach, and it doesn't have to be one car. It could be anything. It could be used. It could be new. Hundred grand. What do you buy? Always for yourself for your own garage. All right, and I have access to no other cars anymore. You have access to no other cars. Hundred thousand dollars to sort your garage out. Hundred thousand dollars. All right. Uh, this is such a Mitt Romney game we play. Okay. Cadillac CTSV wagon so manual. Sixty-two thousand dollars off the window. No, I, I, I. Gee, you know somebody. <laughs> uh, I know somebody. I almost bought one today for forty-eight grand. Oh, used. Okay, so we're yeah, talking used. used. Yeah, used. I'm not. Yeah, cool. New. Break in. All right. Yeah. All right. We still get factory warranty. All right. So first, we have. We have it's a, it's, spend, a, it's so. a GM car. The first service is hundred thousand miles. So. All right. So we have. What do we have? We have sixty left. Uh, no, I have fifty-two left. How much did you say you got it for? 48. That's a good deal. 52. Um, oh, you want a beer? Yeah, keep on thinking. All right, so you have a, well, you have, you know, so that's a convenience car, actually. So you can Yeah, no, that, that, that's my family hauler, so now I can have something more radical. You, uh, can, you can throw a Lotus in there, at least. Nah, Siege. no, I wouldn't. I would, um... I would buy a clapped out high miles Cayman S and spend five grand uh, Fix modifying. It. Modify it. So I'd have uh, so that's gonna cost me thirty two. Yeah. So what am I left with now? I got uh, twenty grand. 
Uh, get anything for 20 grand. 20 grand? Now yeah, I will. I'm going to buy... No, you can get anything. For yeah, 20 grand. At that stage... Oh, last generation M5. No, I already have practical. I'm going to get it... Oh, that's true. I get an E30 M3 race car. Good one. That's how you buy cars. Give me All right, one. yeah, 100 grand. Nah, I don't want 100. Uh, 87. <laughs> <laughs> For 87 grand. Um, Make it see, a little I'm more different. challenging. I'm different because I, I, don't, I don't have children. I don't really need convenience. Yeah, but you get to me. And, and you have a dog. I have a dog. I would get, for 87 grand, I would get the Cayman S from Body Motion. And that's it. And that's it until everybody else walks. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would get. All right, or cool. 87 grand, I would also do, uh, I, I would have to get like a, a 64 Impala. I've always this one category of car I've never yeah, had. Yeah, I mean that that like one, a real low that one with the gold plated everything was yeah, like twenty two thousand dollars, and I think we yeah. probably had it for eighteen. Yep. So, 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 so you have another uh, sixty nine thousand dollars to go. Um, and then I would do. Uh, I'd, can I get a? Can I squeeze a nine nine seven high mile GT three in there? Maybe. Nah, maybe not. Maybe yeah, not. no, you get one for seventy five. So. Actually, I just go get a new Cadillac CTSV. Okay. <laughs> you want, you want a brand do. new car? Yeah, I want a brand new CTSV. Okay. And my other car. Best motoring experience for under 20 grand. I would imagine a. I don't know if you could get an R32 for under 20 grand. Yeah, yeah. R32. BW That's R32. a very, very good one. Yep. One of the most visceral cars straight from the factory you've ever owned. Best yep. exhaust note. Yeah, yeah. Not only that, I think ours was but, yeah. uh, was thirty six thousand dollars total. That car was totaled, written off, insurance check thirty six thousand dollars because well, they really hold their twenty six. But yeah. was it? Yeah, I thought it was for the thing we right. paid for it. No, no, it, it is. Yeah, I mean, we we, oh, uh, we paid twenty six for it. Yeah, yeah. we got twenty six. for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. After like, you know, and we got it. This is actually a great story too. We, this car, a guy walks in here, and he's like, "Oh, do you ever, you know?" maybe take a car on trade for membership, he's a Spanish guy. And we're like, well, yeah, okay, sure. And he, I was like, what do you have? And he's like, I oh, have this R32. And, and he's like, I, I, I bought it and I've been in Barcelona and I don't really drive it and you know. Barcelona. Yeah, Barcelona, <laughs> you know, but I don't really drive it. But it's uh, a cool car, you know, maybe you want to drive, okay? And they're like, I'm like, yeah, sure. And the guy comes back, like, he's like, I need someone to help me get it started. It's been a while. So I send like our junior mechanic. It's only in, like three blocks away in this garage. Brings jumper pack and whatever. Bring this thing down. It's like coated with dust. It only has four thousand miles on it. And this uh, was in two thousand seven. Yep. Um, so the thing was three years old. He he was the second owner. Like the first person bought it. Said, oh, it's too bouncy for me. I don't like it. Took it back. He he bought it secondhand. And because he's from Spain, has no interest in American laws and road rules and stuff. He never even registered it. He still had like the paper plates on it from the from the dealership. And granted, he bought it like 300 miles. He did like a 2,000 mile road trip in it around America. Brought it back here and then like started up every once in a while when he had a chance. Um, but the thing was immaculate. And yeah, we we put it in the books for like 26 grand, and it got T-boned like a year later. And, Twenty thousand miles drunk later. Driver. Yeah, and they they wrote and driving that driving and driving. And they wrote us a check for twenty six grand. I can't imagine it was more than that new. I mean, no. it was like maybe twenty eight. Yeah, know? that that's a good car for twenty grand motor experience. Yeah, I also say, you you could squeeze the last generation M five into that. Yeah, well, E thirty nine. E thirty nine. Yeah, yeah. Which I think is epic. You know, it's best. I, it's a good car. Yeah. So E thirty nine M five, you could probably do an M three. Uh, Depends on what the motor experience is, though. If you're looking for like motorsport. That's driving. Those are all good. Yeah. If you're looking to just kind of like use a car as a social media tool, right? Then you have a lot of options, right? You get like a really cool old Porsche, a really cool old Mercedes. Yeah, and there's but a lot of great Porsches you can buy for less than 20 grand. And and because they're Porsches, you could actually, even a ratty one, you could probably get rely on it to get you around. That's what we're yeah. talking about, right? Like, yeah. you know, it's true, right? You kind of look, we had a member, still have a member, and he always liked to drive the 308s and the 328s because he said, if you have a new Ferrari, it just means you have good credit. But if you have an old one, it means you have acquisition acumen. Which, yeah. It's kind of true, right? So, young kids, 
Oh, you know what? Buy I would, something cool and old. You know what I would buy it for it. under twenty grand? I, I emailed it around this week. It's one of my all-time favorites. It's come back on eBay three times. Oh, Nova. Yeah, sixty-seven Nova with an LS one in it, and and it's total like has the same patina as this Opal that we drove in Lemons. It's it's all kind of rusty and faded and has like black duct tape across the seat. But you open up the engine compartment, it's got this fresh LS1 and a five-speed gearbox. Thing's epic. But it's up to like 15 grand on eBay. And you can actually use it as your daily driver and probably get 30 miles to a gallon. How much is a Fiat 500 a bar for these days? 28? Um, uh, they're probably tipping 30, I would think. I don't know. Uh, yes. That would be a good one. Yeah. What's lightweight and cheap that's fun? I, again, any Honda with an R on it, I think, is kind of fun. Yeah. You get a used one for nothing. Yeah, yeah. Huh. I would do a, a tuned Volkswagen Golf diesel TDI. No one's tuned them yet. I, I bet I bet you could tune those things and make them. I mean, I think they already have like 240 foot pounds of torque. You probably tune them up for like 300 foot pounds of torque. You awesome. got to just solve the flat spot issue. No, that's so I like diesel. I like diesel cars. I like diesel cars. They got torque, more important to me than horsepower and all that. But I think, and Zach and I differ here, you have to, the, the truth is you have to feather it in, right? And you have, when you squeeze it on the power on a diesel, you got to feather it It requires finesse. In. You got to like work with the spooling of the turbo. Yeah. If you, if you just bash it to the ground, <laughs> nothing happens. You just get you nothing out of it. But see, I, I grew up driving those old Volvo turbos. You had to I'm finesse all, them. I'm all for it, but that's not really good throttle response. You know what I mean? Top cars and lemons are always Volvos. I, and I, th I, I have a theory. Zach, Zach's a huge Volvo ophile. He's like on turbo bricks daily. He's a minor celebrity in the scene. I don't f know why. Volvo. But I think that they do really well in lemons because lemons is an endurance race. And Volvo owners are smart and sensible. <laughs> and so I think it's more about the people who purchase a Volvo than the attributes of the Volvo. That's see, my theory. See, I would tell you because it's because the the main bearings in a Volvo, and, and the PA Tuner is the first four-cylinder car with five main bearings, and they were the same size as a Chevy 350. So they're made to... Be sensible. Well, they were made to be sensible because that's like, you know, it'll endure hundreds of thousands of miles. It'll also endure a lot of power. So you can, you can tune those motors up to like 400 horsepower, and the bottom end is not gonna fall apart. That's why they're so quick. I that mean, too, right? you know, the, the, those guys, the, the Keystone Cop guys, or they're kind of like sad looking brown Volvo. Don't be fooled by how sad it looks. They, they've got a turbo in there and some PVC piping, probably like silicone, like turbo pipes inside. And yeah. that thing's probably doing like 260 horsepower, 270 yeah. horsepower. It's definitely quicker than our, our E36 BMW. The only thing that's wrong with Volvos and making them sort of, if you're like, if you're into cars and you're like, and you're young, it's, it, I think it's a car you get when you're younger, right? You know, you saw, you saw Clarkson, it's like new turbo, right? So yeah, like yeah. it's, it's kind of has like a cool nostalgia cool about it for kids. The problem is you buy that when you're like 17 and you're gonna have it until you're 35 because it's just gonna keep on yeah, going. You and you want it, it to be like your first beater and then you like, you know, you bring it out to the woods and you give it a, a Viking burial and all that. You never get that opportunity with that car. It just keeps on going. And as it keeps on going, it just gets sort of older and like more familiar and it becomes like a like the family dog. Like you really love it, but yeah. farts a lot and won't die. <laughs> you can't upgrade it because it's still there. I don't know. That's how I feel about like the Volvo thing. Uh, my, my first one got the proper Viking burial. That, that, that's, that's maybe why I appreciate it so much. Because what happened was I gave the keys to my brother. My brother, while, you know, He's a very sensible guy now. Like you take him out, like we'll have him shuffle cars around with us and like we lose him because he won't go over 55 miles an hour on an interstate. He used to be a bit of a wild man and he, somehow he blew that thing up. Like I, I put about 100,000 miles on it in high school and he managed to, to kill it in like four months. And I came home and it was, it, you know, it was Maine, so of course there was snow on the ground. Right. And the car at this point, you know, the blown motor was up on jack stands and he had stripped all these parts off to put on his Volvo. So since there were no wheels, you know, no headlights, it's all just kind of like sad carcass. And there was like a ring of rust around it in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. And to close our segment, uh, we actually think that Road Excrement could be a really good show, but we'd like to do it live. And so if you like it when you see it on a Thursday, 
I think if you um, say a lot of nice, kind words on the bulletin board and all of those things, there might be a chance that we have actually really good guests for the show, and we do it live, live, live on the internet. Live tubes. from multiple locations around the world. How about this? New York, London, the Nurburgring, yep. Antarctica. Maybe not. Southern New Jersey. Okay. Close enough. That's Three far locations enough away. around the world, live, live. And then you guys could participate in it as well. Yeah, I think we should do so, it. So hit your likey buttons and um, you know, make sure you do things on Twitter that are appropriate for this sort of a thing, and we'll figure that out. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>